Hey everybody, today we're gonna to talk about how to heal your life. Louise Hay had a great book called How to Heal Your Life. I read it a long time ago and it was a beautiful book and it basically talked about how to just heal your outer experience. And that's a little bit about what I'm talking about today, but what I'm gonna go even deeper on is the fact that your outer experience is a reflection of your inner world. Your outer is a reflection of what's going on inside, inside of your mind, inside of your emotional system, inside of your subconscious mind, inside of your habitual thinking, your surface level mind. It's a reflection of your physical state, how you're taking care of your body, your energy levels, what you think about yourself. So all of these things are reflected back to you. And there's no getting around that. So step one is just the framework of understanding there is nothing, 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 nothing outside of you. So your financial situation, your health situation, your relationship status, your relationship situations, all of that is a reflection of an inner state. So a lot of the times we look at what's happening on the, on the outside world and we feel like a victim. I know I was personally in a victim kind of consciousness and a victim role for a long time and it didn't serve me very well. It's something that I didn't prefer to happen would happen in my life. I would assume the position, the inner position, the inner state of, oh, this happened to me and why is this happening to me? In retrospect and looking back, I can see now a lot of the things that happened to me, and I'm using air quotes for those of you listening, nothing happened to me. Everything was happening in cooperation with me. Everything was happening in concert with me. Life is always dancing with us. So if you imagine a dance partner, when you're, when you're anywhere out dancing, if you've ever done a move, if you make a move, your dance partner has no other option than to kind of move around with you. Hence, life. Life is a dance partner. So your financial situation is a dance partner. Your partnership, any companionships, your friendships, your romantic partner, all of these are different aspects of the dance of life. It's dancing with you. And we cannot show up in a way that is disharmonious inside and expect life to give us a different dance than what we're offering. So from my own personal experience, when I was for a long time in a state of hyper vigilance, super judgmental of other people, feeling sorry for myself on a constant basis, feeling not good enough, that was a huge belief inside of my nervous system, inside of my body, inside of my mind. I'm not good enough. What kind of dance partner am I gonna get with those, with those states of being? I'm gonna get physical illness because I'm working myself to the bone 16 hours to 17 hours a day. I was a workaholic. I'm gonna get unhealthy relationships because I am not good. Everybody, I cannot trust anybody, so I get untrustworthy people or people who don't treat me well, so on and so forth. It's, it doesn't create great situations, but all of this can be healed and it can be healed in an instant. And when I say in an instant, I'm not, that's not hyperbolic. It can be changed in a literal instant. You can choose it now. You can choose to change your life in this very moment now. You do not have to wait to be fixed by the outside world, to be fixed by some some therapists, therapists are fine, therapists can be great, but you don't have to wait to be healed because you already you are already healed and whole and perfect. Leading us to the next step. Number two, we have to come to experiencing ourselves as we truly are, not experiencing ourselves from the small little ego that's created all these booby traps for us all the time. See, the ego is very clever. The small self, we can also call it the small self, the small little me, your little self, the one creating all the havoc in your life. It's created lots of little booby traps for you to be stepping on all the time so that you cannot, so that you are not able to experience your, yourself for who and what you really are. You're not able to experience the truth of your soul in this moment. Once you wake up to the fact that anything in your life that is not in harmony with your soul, that doesn't feel good to your soul, that doesn't bring you joy and bliss and peace and harmony, those are all things created by your ego, by the small self. It's a booby trap. And here's why it's a booby trap, because the ego says, it's a siren song. It says, you've got money troubles. Let's focus on all these money troubles. Let's try to figure this out. 
let's spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours reading about researching, focusing on spinning our wheels, never getting anywhere, trying to build a billion different businesses, never getting anywhere, never getting any traction. We've got relationship problems. Let's wind ourselves around this relationship problem for decades, for, for months and months or years and years. Let's wind ourselves around this problem and try to figure it out and try to solve it, try to change it. Meanwhile, there's a very important pile of literal, literal treasure energetic treasure that you're sitting upon that you don't see. The ego can't let you see it because if you see this pile of treasure sitting beneath you that you have access to at any given moment that's within you, well, then the ego's cooked. The ego is done for. And there's a big part of the small self that dies away when you stop focusing on all the stuff happening out here and you get into the truth of who and what you are. So how do we go into experiencing this beautiful divine being that you are to start healing your life? The very first most important thing, most elemental thing, if there's one thing you take away from this video, it's this. You can experience everything I just talked about, your divine, whole, perfect nature, that part of you that is going to bring you ultimately to a free, peaceful, joyful, healthy life by releasing all that is not that. I'm going to say that again. You come to the realization, the experience of your soul and your divine nature by letting go of everything that is not that. So take an inventory right this second. Look at your life. Look within, look without. Look at your relationships. Look at your finances, look at your thoughts, all of it. Anything that is not that, the capital T-H-A-T, anything that is not that, that is not the I am that I am, that is not of your soul, that is not of harmony, we have to let it go. We have to let go of those false beliefs. We have to let go of these grievances. We have to let go of complaining. We have to let go of these lower ways of thinking and being. We have to let go of the unhealthy habits, which we'll get to in a minute. But first and foremost, we have to let go of all those parts of ourselves that are blocking our experiencing of our wholeness, of our soul. So when we wake up, most people wake up and they feel panic or fear or dread or anxiety. You might be going through a period where you're feeling panic, fear, anxiety, dread, heaviness, sadness. And and the ego says, we have to worry about this thing. We have to worry about what's going to happen in the future. We have to worry about, you know, whatever it is. We have to think about the past. We have to think about all the things that happened in the past. We have to think about what happened yesterday. We have to think about what happened an hour ago. We have to think about that calamity, that tragedy. Those things are not of you. They are not here anymore. You are completely free of the past and of the future. So the minute that you embrace everything that is you now and everything that is you, it's very simple. It's very simple. It's an experience. It's an experiential knowing. It's a direct experience in the here and now that cannot ever be taken from you. In the here and now, right here and now, when you let go of thinking about problems, of complaining about things, anything, no complaining, let it go for a little while. When you fully embrace what's left over, when you let go of all the lower vibration mental patterns and chatter and the lower vibration energies of your um, emotions that are brought on by those negative thinking patterns and those negative beliefs, they slowly start to melt like little icebergs. And sometimes we get to a quick path and sometimes it, it can be instant depending on your willingness to let it go. It can be instant. You can let go of all the things that are not you in this very moment. But sometimes it might just be a habitual thing and you have to take some time to, oh, here I am complaining about finances again. Oh, here I am complaining or worrying about that relationship issue. Oh, here I am again worrying about where my husband is or whatever. Those things are not of you. So we have to clean it up in our mind and we have to be dedicated and devoted. So that brings me to the next step. This is step number three. Step number three is we have to, if we want to heal our lives, we have to be devoted to 
to whatever whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it God, peace, love, oneness, truth. You have to devote your life to the higher aspects. If if we don't devote our lives and say number one priority is love, peace, God, whatever word you want to use, insert word here. This is not about ideology. This is not about religion. This is about that thing that I just told you, what it's pointing to, the real true experience of your wholeness, your your truth, your soul. If you say, I, I devote myself to peace, well, guess what? Now you've got a North Star. Now your life is on the on the mend. Now you put yourself in a literal cast, a cocoon of love and peace and truth that is impenetrable by the nonsense that might happen to you on, on, the day to, on a day-to-day basis. So maybe you have some financial situations that might be needing tended to, or you might have some some issues, some conflicts coming up, but you've got an impenetrable cast of devotion around your life. This is a force field that you're building up, a force field that protects you from vampires, a force field that protects you from calamities, a force field that protects you from the distractions and the giving of your attention away to the junk media and all the things that are distracting many other people and ruining our attention spans. So devote yourself to We can just even call it your highest self. I devote myself to this path of highest self connection, of the oneness, of the source, of love. I'm devoted. There's nothing that's more important to me than that. And in my own personal life, the minute that I made that choice, there's there's no turning back from that choice. So my life is devoted to God, to peace to love, to the highest aspects of the universe, to filling myself up to the brim with that, with that, that I am that I am. And then, and then it spills over into life. It spills over. It starts to take over, takes over your mind, takes over your life, takes over your finances. It says here, I got this. Don't worry about it. So things might happen. I'm not going to tell you that when you devote your life like this, that things aren't going to happen to you. But what happens is when things happen, it, it's a learning lesson. You're no longer a victim. You get stronger from the things that happen. And don't make that choice until you're good and ready because things are going to fall away. And that's a good thing. Things that you no longer need are going to fall away. And that's going to lead me to the next step. This is step four. Step four of healing your life is surrendering, letting go, releasing, allowing, letting go, surrendering, releasing, and allowing. When you are in a position where you know your life needs to change in one or many areas, that's because there are certain aspects in your life that are ready to be let go of. And not a lot of people have the courage to let go of the pillars in their lives and watch the pillars crumble before them because they assume if the pillars of my life crumble and fall away, what do I have to stand on? And that's why we have to go back to step three. We have to choose to build our lives on devotion to God or peace or whatever you want to call it, the higher the higher force of love. And when your house is built on that solid foundation, when pillars crumble and all pillars crumble in this in this world, nothing nothing lives forever, nothing lasts forever. So when you when your pillars crumble, you now have you're still going to experience emotions for sure, but you now have that assuredness because your your house is built on solid rock. Your house is built on solid ground, and so you're not so shakable. So you're more willing to let go of those things that are begging you to let go of them, those old ways of being, those old ways of operating in the world, those old ways of maybe you're overworking. Maybe you've been working 16-hour days like I was for a long time there. I was overworking, working to the bone, and I was not going to let it go because it was such a huge part of my identity. Meanwhile, my body was whispering and life was whispering, let this go, let this go, let this go. And I did not trust it. I didn't even hear it. I didn't stop for a second to listen to it. And my life was not devoted to this highest aspect. My life was devoted to placating my ego's needs, to be accepted, to be loved, to be an achiever and and a successful person. And the minute that I finally let go of that way of being, I experienced a huge sense of relief. And for the first time in many, many years of my life, I experienced that that true 
part of who and what I am because that pillar had crumbled, because I let it fall away. Because I was leaning on that pillar, I wasn't able to experience myself for who and what I truly was because I was leaning on this pillar. So the pillars crumble. And what happens is when your pillars crumble, the pillars in your life, in your life that are ready to crumble, whatever they may be, maybe it's your spending habits, maybe it's the friends you have, maybe it's the career, the career path that you've chosen, maybe it's the way you interface with your work. Maybe it's that you need to grow more. Maybe it's you're not painting enough and you're an artist or you're not writing enough and you you know you want to be writing. Maybe it's your heart calling you to do something today. To that Maybe it's something that your heart's been calling you to do for a long time. Maybe it's time to sell all of your things and move across the country. Who knows? But if you know that there's a pillar in your life that's been ready to crumble and you've been scared and you've been holding on to it, my friend, the way that you heal your life is to let go of those crumbling pillars because they are going to crumble regardless. And it's up to you how you would like them to crumble. The, the, the option one is eventually life gives you no other option and the pillars crumble and it's kind of a hard lesson. And those are called bricks upside your head, <laughs> proverbial energetic bricks upside your head. The other option is you can start listening to your soul and start letting the pillars crumble in your life and taking a little bit of action to, to let go physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, energetically, to let go of the pillars that are no longer needed in your life. Why we do this work is so that we grow. Part of the reason that we've incarnated in this life, part of the reason that we've chosen, each of us has chosen to come here, I believe that each of us has chosen to come here on this a magnificent, incredible, ineffable journey called life, is so that we can experience the vastness of our souls. And when we get stuck and when we get stifled and when we allow fear and the small ego self to call the shots, it's a painful experience because the soul is energetically trying to expand and it's begging, please let this pillar go. And the small ego self is constricting and we're not allowing that growth. And the minute that you start letting that growth happen, you begin to become a container for more and more of that light, more and more of that strength, more and more of that courage, more and more of all the things that you already are, you're able to experience, and experience them on a fuller degree. So you start to experience a surge of energy. Your body, if, it, if you have chronic illness, there's a good chance that those heal up. I can't recommend it enough to just take the leap. Even if you just start unraveling your pillars little by little, little by little, little by little. Okay, and the last step that I wanted to offer you is start doing the thing. Start doing the thing. Start doing the thing. I don't know what your thing is. Everyone's got one. Every single, of all the, of all the hundreds of people I've worked with one-on-one -on -one this past year, every single person has their one thing that they know would start to make them feel so much better that their soul is asking, please do this. And they think it's just a little thing. But these little things, for instance, um, taking a whole day off a week. I've got a lot of workaholic clients who don't take enough time off. And so taking a whole day off a week, a lot of them are like, wow, like, I don't know if I can. Yes, you can. You're not the president of the United States. Let's go ahead and schedule that in. Take a day off or start going for your walk. And you might feel resistance. You might not want to go for your walk. You might really not want to go for your walk. And the more resistance you experience, the more that you know that's the direction you want to go in because your ego is clamping down on that growth. So the things that grow you, they're not going to be comfortable. They're not going to feel good initially. They're not going to feel good until after you do them. And then after you do them, you notice that expansive feeling. And that's your soul growing. That's your energetic system aligning. That's you becoming empowered. That's you being embodied. So do the thing, that one thing. There is one thing. I, I, have, not, I have not worked with a single person who hasn't had one big juicy thing that they think, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll get to it one day. And then the minute they start doing that one thing, all the other dominoes start flicking into place. So do that one thing, whatever it is, and do it scared. Do it, do it uncomfortable. Do it with resentment. Do it 
even if you don't want to do it. Just do the one thing and start doing it every day if you can. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. If you want to work with me, I've got a couple spots left for the summer. You can check that out at brendaturner.com slash one. And you can join my community where you get weekly group coaching sessions, a full access to my course catalog, and so much more. That's at brendaturner.com slash transform. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Bye.